Hey, good morning. It's me, Mr. Treeman. We are uh, back for another lesson in geometry. Today, we are going to be looking at the trigonometric functions regarding right triangles. We're going to be focusing on those buttons on the calculator that you've been wondering, what are these things for, for, I don't know, however many years you've been using a calculator. And they are going to be the sine, cosine, and tangent. And we call these functions because each one of these is basically an equation in which you plug in some information and like a function you learn in algebra, as you plug information in, information comes back out. So each of these we're going to be looking at, the first one's called the sine function, and it has to do with uh, the ratio between the opposite length versus the hypotenuse length on a right triangle. Our cosine is our adjacent versus the hypotenuse, and our tangent is the opposite and adjacent. If you're wondering which one you choose, well, you choose the problem or you're going to choose the function that matches the information you're given. So each time you take a look at a drawing, you sit there, you look at that information, you consider how those two pieces of information are related, and then that's how you choose what button we're going to be choosing on the calculator. A uh, quick example of this I want to run over, uh, run through with you is if I have a right triangle drawn, and by the way, these are only regarding right triangles, but if I have a right triangle, and I want to find the function for sine, that is comparison of my opposite over my hypotenuse. So when you think about this, you have to position yourself at the angle that we're talking about. So if I say sine of angle A, you need to position yourself at angle A, which in this case is right up here. Well, from the angle A, I, use, I like to use like a pencil method or something like that, and I say, well, if I'm at angle A and I point a is my opposite, because in geometry, opposite is meaning across from. So if I'm at angle A, A down here is opposite from me. It's directly across. So when I want to find the sine function, I want the opposite over the hypotenuse. So when I look at that, at point A, side A, the length A, over C, because C is my hypotenuse, that would be the sine function. If I want to look at my cosine, well, my cosine is what's called an adjacent, which in geometry or in math means next to. Well, if I'm at angle A, side B is right next to angle A. It's one of the, the sides that make the angle A. So my cosine would be B, and again, my hypotenuse is C. Well, the last function that we look at is the tangent, and that's where we take the opposite over the adjacent for that particular angle. So again, if I'm at angle A, my opposite's A, my adjacent's B. Now this changes when you move to a different angle. So I'm gonna erase this little arrowhead for a moment, and if I'm over here, for example, at angle B, well now my opposite is here. Because again, I'm across from, opposite of. So my opposite would now be B, and my hypotenuse would be C. So if you look at it and stand back, you can see that the sine of A versus the sine of B, well, they're the opposite side because you've gone from one side of the triangle to the other. So it always comes down to where you're gonna, met, where you're gonna be located as to what uh, numbers you're comparing. So with that being said, let's look at our first example. And I am trying to rush through this a little bit because I got to keep it under a certain minutes, otherwise it gets too, too long. But if I'm at angle 63 and I want to solve this problem, the first letter I can look at is either the X or Y. It doesn't really matter. Either way, I'm, I'm going to have a function for each. So I'll probably just start in this case. Let's start with 63 and everybody always starts with X. So when I'm at 63, this value over here is my opposite. Y is my opposite, X is my adjacent, and 27 is my hypotenuse. So when I want to solve the function for X, I'm going to start off by saying adjacent over hypotenuse, which matches with the cosine function. So I'll say cosine, and we always abbreviate, it's not cos, it's cosine 63, is equal to x over 27. All right, well, how do I solve that? Well, that goes back to a little bit of algebra. So I'll start off with 27, and I'll have to multiply that on both sides because I want to get rid of that fraction. So on my calculator, I start off with 
and it really comes out, it's a lot of backward stuff on the calculator. Because you want to just start off with saying 27 times the cosine of 63, but we use this Casio calculator, and the same thing goes with the iPhone, it's the exact same as this one. But on these particular calculators, you actually start with the 63, and you say 63 cosine times 27, and then you make sure to hit the equal. And I got in this case 12.25, so I'm going to abbreviate, I'm going to approximate that to 12.3. All right, well, if I want to do value of y, I can now turn around for value of y and say, all right, well, back to the 63. And in this case, y is my opposite and 27 is my hypotenuse. So I just switch function to 27, or uh, to uh, sine, and I get y over 27. Well, I'm going to do the same process. I'm going to multiply by 27 to get the fraction out. And so I have 27 sine 63 equals y. So I go back and check that. I say, all right, so 63 sine times 27. And I get 24.1. And these are approximations. And then I always want to make sure I go back and I look at my work and make sure, does this sound legitimate? Now, when I say sound legitimate, here's what I mean. I know that 27 is my hypotenuse, which means 27 must be the largest side of the triangle or the longest side of the triangle. So when I look at that, I say, all right, well, that, that makes sense. And then when I look out over here, I know that if this is 63 and triangles have to make 27 or make have to make 90, that means it's 27 degrees. Well, that should make sense. We should be able to see a correlation where we have a larger angle goes to a larger side, just like a smaller angle goes to a smaller side. We covered this in inequalities in a previous chapter. So I can look at that and say, well, that makes sense. This one should definitely be smaller than that one because 27 is smaller than 63. So what I mean by legit is just making sure that the, fun the problem makes sense. Make sure that the functions match. Because if you were to use the wrong function for this, you will get an answer that makes it kind of not make any sense, if you know what I mean. So that's why I always say step back, make sure it seems legitimate. And most of the time, you can figure that out pretty quickly. All right, so our next problem is when we look at this one, we're going to solve for x and y. But once again, if we find the angle and then say, all right, that's my opposite. Point at your opposite so you figure it out. This is my hypotenuse, and this is my adjacent. You always point at your opposite, and that's my best way of describing how to do this. All right, well, in this case, it's going to be a little bit different. So let's say we start with x. Opposite is x. Hypotenuse is blank. I guess I can't use that one. I can't go to my hypotenuse but I have opposite and adjacent. So that means I'm gonna start off with a tangent function. So I start off with tangent 26, and it's gonna be equal to x over 18. Remember, this is my opposite, that's my adjacent. So to get my answer, I gotta multiply by 18. So I end up with 18 tangent 26. So I type it in my calculator backwards as usual. 26 tangent times 18. And I get 8.8. .8. Oh, I meant to write that right there, but oh well. Oh well. All right. Again, making sense, because if I know this is 26, that means that this angle down here has to be something very close to 90, and it would be 64 degrees. So knowing that, I would know that this side has got to be longer because 64 is a much bigger number than 26. But back to my problem of solving for y. Okay, so on y, if I go back to that 26, and I start off with my adjacent, if I use that 18 and y, I'm going to say cosine 26 is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And that brings up a problem. So when I write it down, I 
Well, now y is on the bottom of the fraction, which means I'm gonna to have to do, instead of a multiply each time like I did here, I have to switch this into a division problem. And it looks like this. And I unfortunately just can't do the whole, every bit of this to work it out. It just would take too much time for us. So I have to go and just make this as simple as I can as far as if you multiply, or if x is on the top, you multiply, if x is on the bottom, you divide. And so on this one, when you type it in the calculator, a little bit different. You're going to start off with 18 and divide it by 26 cosine. And you're going to get some crazy answer, and a lot of kids think that's it. They're like 0.89, and they start trying to write that down. Don't forget, you got to hit equals. Now I get the answer of 20.0, oh, actually. It's approximately 20. I did round. And then I go back again and say, does this make sense? Well, it does. Because y was my hypotenuse, so I knew it had to be a big, the biggest of the three numbers, and it is. Which brings me to my very last example. And I know I said, I take a breath because I'm going so fast, but I gotta do this. I like to keep the videos at a shorter length. All right, what do I do in the situation when I don't have the angle? Well, I still have sides, which means I can still figure it out. So let's say that I want to figure out x, because I know if I figure out x, I can always figure out y, because the two of them have to make 90 degrees. So let's say I start at x. Well, doing the whole thing with drawing the arrow, saying, all right, well, this is my opposite. Just labeling my pieces. That's my opposite. This is my hypotenuse. This is my adjacent. Well, knowing that, I can figure out that I have enough information. I have a 12 and a 19, which means I have an adjacent and a hypotenuse. So I can go ahead and write a cosine function. Although it's missing something, I can write a cosine function. Uh, cosine of x is going to be equal to 12 over 19. All right. Well, on a calculator, the way you do that is you take and you divide 12 by 19, and you make sure to hit enter at this point. Now you get a number on, I got 0.63, blah, 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 blah. This is not the angle. You have to use a button called an inverse. And what you do is you hit shift, and then you hit cosine, which is inverse, meaning I want, the, I want it to work the function backwards. I have the numbers, I want the angle. And when I do that, I get the answer of approximately 51 degrees. And we always round angles to the nearest whole number. So X is approximately 51 degrees. Well, we know that triangles have to make 180. So if this one's 50, I can tell you right now that this one should be 29. But just to be sure, I'm gonna go ahead and prove it. I believe this is 29. So I'm just gonna write it here and then we'll verify by writing a second function. So if you're up here at Y, 12 would be your opposite and 19 would be your hypotenuse. So if you're at y, you'd have sine y is equal to 12 over 19. Well, when I plug that in the calculator, 12 divided by 19 equals, and then I hit shift sine, I get 39. So my math is bad and it's after school, so that's probably why I can't add anymore. I'm spent. But anyways, it's 39 degrees, which is actually the real answer. So, and I know that's true because 51 and 39 make 90 degrees and all triangles make 180. I hope this helps um, and that's it. Thank you.